So what we have here is the world's first webcam. This is a little single CCD camera. It took black and white images, not in very high resolution, as I recall. It was probably, it might have been 500 pixels across that sort of number, maybe 700. It might have been a PAL signal, but, um, but we didn't often actually use it at that resolution uh, because storing that kind of quality of image and transmitting it was a bit hard on the, on the networks, most of the networks of the time. So this was um, 1991. The web was just starting about then. Uh, first few web browsers were around, but not very many people knew about them at this point. And I was working in um, the University Computer Lab. We're in the University Computer Lab here now, um, or the Department of Computer Science and Technology, as it's now officially called. Um, but in those days, it was in a much nastier building over in the center of town. And I was part of a group that was working on um, multimedia over computer networks. Back in those days, we didn't know how good this could be. Networking standards were still being developed. We didn't know whether Ethernet or ATM or Token Ring or someone was going to be the one that won. We were looking at things like how good a frame rate, how high a quality, how much color can you get? Could you do broadcast quality video over computer networks? We didn't know that at the time. So, a lot of people in the group were um, working on how you create this sort of stuff, how you transmit it, how you store it, how you process it in real time and so on. And that meant that we had various fun bits of multimedia kit lying around in a way that really wasn't very common at, at the time. And, uh, but we, th there was also something that was very important for computer science research, has always been important for computer science research, and that's a good flow of coffee. Uh, this dates, I think, partly back to the time when you had to book you know, time on the mainframe late at night, and so um, you, know, you needed the coffee to keep you awake uh, while you were working. But we computer scientists get through a lot of coffee, and we had this particularly bad coffee machine in the lab in those days, and it was shared between about 15 of us working in this group. And most of us worked in the same room, so the coffee pot was right there. It was a sort of filter drip machine thing. And it never made very good coffee, but it particularly didn't make good coffee if it was stale, if it had been sitting there for some time and you didn't get it when it first came through the filter. It was really bad. So some of us worked in that room, but some people in the group worked in rooms down the corridor or even two or three floors up, and they would often come down and they wouldn't have, we, we felt they didn't have fa you know, fair share of access to the fresh coffee. And, uh, and because we had um, some bits of kit lying around, like you know, little cameras that we could actually connect to computers, um, cameras that you could connect to computers were pretty rare in those days. This was actually the first one we used. We gripped this in a kind of retort stand and pointed it at the coffee pot. And my friend Paul Jardetsky wrote a little bit of software on one of our dedicated machines in the rack that would capture images from this um, once every we captured them about once every 10 seconds or something, maybe, maybe faster than that, I don't know. But, um, and I wrote a little app, this was at the time an ex-Windows app that would display a little icon-sized image of the coffee pot. You run my app and it would appear in the corner of your screen. That meant that people who, particularly people who weren't nearby, could just glance down, see what the state of the coffee pot was and know whether it was worth a trip downstairs or around the corner or whatever to get, to get a fresh cup. And, uh, it was built on some experimental RPC protocols we were using at the time. You had to be running our special networking stack, um, and, uh, but it all worked very well, and we threw it together very quickly. Um, not because we were particularly brilliant, but because a lot of guys in the group had been doing their PhDs or other research on this for some years, and so we had a lot of the tools there to take images from cameras and um, uh, and, and put them in, get them into computers. And interestingly, of course, it was video that we were getting out of the cameras in those days. Uh, digital still cameras, actually decent ones, didn't come along for quite a while after that, but we did have uh, video cameras which would output a video signal and then you would have a frame grabber card which would capture individual frames uh, and turn in, into memory and turn those back into video in the computer. They were about three frames a minute or something that we actually displayed in, in, in the little window of the app. 
which was fine because the coffee pot filled up very slowly and emptied fairly slowly. So that would give you sufficient uh, data for your coffee making decisions. And they were also grayscale images, but we joked that that didn't matter because the coffee was pretty gray as well. And so this was sufficient. So it was a sort of disruptive view of the video. Everyone else in the group, including me, had been working on what's the best quality, the best resolution, the best color you can get. And we discovered that it was actually also really useful to point a camera at an inanimate object and get, I think it was about 120 pixels square, maybe even less than that, in grayscale, low frame rate video. That actually could still serve a useful purpose. In 1993, web browsers started to get the ability to display images. Before that, you could display text, you could change the size a little bit, you could change the color, I think you could change the background of the, of the page, but you couldn't really do um, you know, very much uh, more than that. And then the image tag in HTML, which let you embed images, started to come into the Mosaic browser in, in early 93, spring of 93, I think. And we thought, oh, this is interesting. What would happen if the browser went to the web server and said, please give me this, this image? Um, and the server didn't give back the same image every time. We didn't know. Would the browser have cached it? Uh, would it get confused? Would it only ask once? Because up to that point, most people had just been using images to show graphs of their results or pictures of their girlfriends or the logos of their institution, usually. And uh, it was all very static. So we thought, hmm, where have we got a source of constantly changing images? Aha, the coffee pot camera. So um, my friends Dan Gordon and Martin Johnson took this stuff that was coming out of here and was using our own RPC protocols and network stacks and so on, and just quickly bolted on a thing that let it be accessed as a, probably a GIF actually, um, over um, HTTP, this new HTTP protocol. It worked very nicely and we could create a little web page and it meant that people in the group did not have to be running our specific networking stack and my particular little um, app and so on, they could just go to one of these newfangled web pages and see how much coffee was in the coffee pot, which was good. But as a side effect, it meant that everybody in the world could also see how much coffee was in our coffee pot. And we didn't realize this, but it turned into quite, you know, initially we never knew this would be, this would happen, but it turned into quite a, a novelty, quite a popular novelty, we'd call it a meme now, I guess, on the, um, on the early web, because back in those days, uh, there were, really weren't very many things to look at on the early web. And I, I think we're still talking about a time when browsers didn't even have bookmarks, you know, favorites menus, because there were so few sites out there that you could, um, you know, you could remember the ones, <laughs> the URLs of the things you wanted to look at. So you, you were browsing around uh, and all of a sudden you came across this page where a group had done this crazy thing of taking what was then a very valuable bit of technology <laughs> and pointing it at this rather grotty looking coffee pot um, uh, simply so they could get fresh coffee. And that kind of caught people's imagination and it became something of an icon in the, the early days of the web. Eventually we did decide, however, that it had run its course and it was time to turn it off. And so we turned the camera around and pointed it at the computer that had been taking all of these images over the years. And the very last image this captured was the, uh, all of our fingers pressing the off switch of the computer that had been running it for those 10 years. That computer that was turned off ceremoniously, was it, was it the same one all the time? And was it the same capture card or had you had to make changes? And We, I think it was changed once. The very um, the very first software ran on, we, ha we had these racks of single board computers plugged into a VME bus for people who remember those kind of things. They were, they were designed specially for this project, mostly one or two of them were standard, but uh, they, as I recall, it was a board about this size that had a frame grabber card alongside it. Uh, and, um, and this was connected into the, the frame grabber card and, and the software ran on there. Um, under our own operating system. And um, after a while, that 
hardware proved somewhat unreliable and we ended up switching to an Archimedes. So I think for most of its life it was, it was an Archimedes computer that actually captured the image. But this was another reason we turned it off after 10 years. Uh, the number of people around who even remembered the operating system that we were running and, the, and, and knew how the software worked and so on was getting quite small and it, you know, <laughs> it needed to be repaired a few times and so on. We used to joke in the early days that things happened so fast on the web that it was sort of like dog years. You know, one year on the web was seven years in, in, in real life. And um, it was kind of fun that this went from being a novelty to being a where did this whole webcam thing start to being an historic artifact to being something that people pined for when it was being switched off because of their, you know, nostalgic memories, all in a 10 year period. You know, there's almost nowhere else in, in the world in general where, where things can go from novelty to, to antique in 10 years. And, uh, and so that was part of the fun of it. So sometimes your floppies would die, so you often would make backup copies. Um, let's try this one. Sounds more hopeful. And so there was this game called Lander, 